So does that mean NVIDIA can still count on relying on China's market and it will take some time before uh, players like Huawei can catch up given the importance of the entire ecosystem? Yeah, catching up is interesting. So what Huawei has done with their latest stack called um, Cloud Matrix is even though their processors were only one third of the performance of NVIDIA's, what they did is they found very novel ways to uh, connect those GPUs uh, using light. And they also uh, were very good at networking these racks together. So even though they generated uh, or they required three times the amount of power to get the same performance of, of NVIDIA, uh, many customers did make it work. And that's what I believe that the China military is using uh, as an example, or critical infrastructure inside of China. I do not think that they're using in NVIDIA chips for hopefully obvious reasons. So it's not that China has to catch up. I mean, it could take five, six plus years to catch up. And the, and the biggest moat right now from China catching up on the data center AI side is the process technology that, that's used. Uh, China has SMIC and bleeding edge or bleeding edge manufacturers like NVIDIA and AMD uh, and Intel are using TSMC. And that is the biggest moat that uh, SMIC and China is trying to figure out. How do I replace or not be reliant on ASML EUV uh, technology and instead use an older generation called uh, DUV that they have been optimizing as much as they possibly can. And then when you add that moat on top of the, the CUDA moat, that this is why I do understand why people say that it's gonna take 10 years to, to get uh, to, uh, to parity. How much of this, Patrick, is about setting the global standards? I mean, it is a lower margin story for NVIDIA when it comes to less, well, less advanced chips, AI chips so that are going to China, but somehow people are talking about what Intel managed to do, try to do in the 90s with its PC chip ecosystem, with NVIDIA's CUDA trying to set the standards around the world, and they just cannot miss out on the opportunities to do that in China. Do you buy into that narrative? Uh, I do, and I think it's even bigger than China. If you look at China's Belt and Road Initiative, wherever China is trying to lay out Belt and Road, this is where I would expect uh, Huawei, Ascend, and, and other companies like Cambricon to, to come into play, where over five, 10 year period, just like we saw with Huawei and Telecom going from 2% market share to up to 50% market share, that is what I believe China wants to do. Now, it, to, to do it easier, right, is when you remove uh, NVIDIA from the equation there uh, with Chinese developers, and uh, by removing uh, NVIDIA, you're making it that much easier for Huawei to grow global market shows. So yes, I do believe we're looking at what is the global standard? And we can argue whether it's AMD or whether it's NVIDIA or someday uh, Intel, uh, when they get more competitive in data center uh, GPUs. But I think that is the right long-term question, even if uh, NVIDIA's uh, dollar margin uh, per chip is lower, I think lower margin is better than zero margin than they saw when H20s were not able to be sold into China.
So, Patrick, look, let's put it all together, uh, right? The, basically, the, the, the top line is, okay, great, NVIDIA's back in China, right? H20's uh, to come soon. Uh, the chip that you and Sherry were just talking about, their budget uh, without the bells and whistles uh, chip, which is, I think, the Blackwell RTX Pro 6000, that, to give it its uh, official name, uh, right? And you're saying, look, they're going to price it so that they're more competitive with Chinese uh, product. Here's my question to you, right? When I think about it, uh, for an NVIDIA, right, uh, a chip like uh, the uh, Blackwell RTX Pro 6000, that's kind of a layup potentially, right, especially because it uh, would be seen more as a value proposition. It's like NVIDIA for less, right? But is that necessarily going to mean that Chinese customers are going to go for it? I mean, you could argue, right, in terms of continuity, in terms of familiarity, because of CUDA, et cetera. Look, right. it's the easy layup, right? It's the easy two-point play. But, you know, all of these tech names, when they make decisions, it's not as though they have a free hand. If Xi Jinping and his directive is, look, no, I want us to be self-sufficient. I want us to be able to do everything ourselves up and down the vertical, is it going to be as easy for NVIDIA? Uh, short answer is no, uh, particularly if SMIC figures out uh, DUV and can crank out some more volume. But the problem is SMIC can't, and I don't believe that SMIC can fulfill all of the volume that Huawei would need uh, to fulfill uh, Xi Jinping's uh, plan. Uh, they would have to fix that the largest of moat, which is trying to compete with ASML on, on EUV and then competing with TSMC on the foundry side. And that's very, very hard with, even with Intel and Samsung's infinite power and, and resources, they've had a hard time competing uh, with TSMC with leading edge equipment from, from ASML. And what I'm pointing out is just how hard it would be. Now, one thing I've learned, right? I've been in tech for 35 years. Uh, I was working inside uh, China before most companies was, were. Uh, this was back in 1997, working through Taiwan into China. Um, you never count, you never say that the Chinese can't do something because history shows that they have been able to figure it out and quite frankly and this is just really good it, it, this is psychology that happens globally once you put a big enough challenge in front of somebody and there's enough motivation and resources people figure it out uh, in the u.s we saw it with the space program we were challenged by the soviets uh, when it came uh, down to uh, certain conflicts uh, countries figure it out uh, ultimately. I think deep seek is a perfect example and we can debate uh, whether that model was diffused, whether they copied intellectual property or output from open AI. The fact is the way methods it did, it's training uh, and pre-training was very innovative and sure, Google had written white papers about the theory exactly. of it. Yeah about doing it like that, but DeepSeek actually did.